From here, we're looking at the pay clock dashboard. And on the pay clock dashboard is your home base for um, navigating throughout the software. If you are an administrator or a supervisor, you're gonna see a list of employees in your database that are assigned to you. So if you are the administrator, you'll see all employees in your company. If you are uh, a manager, you'll only see the employees that you are assigned to manage. Um, also, you'll see based on that employee criteria selection, you'll see a breakdown of uh, hours in that current pay period and any exceptions that you've chose to track in your system. Uh, also, working our way around the screen, we'll point out some different areas. Uh, in the software, you'll see uh, this button here, which is moving your cards around. Um, you can remove them all. I can drag them back onto the screen and rearrange them in any uh, position I want or close them or configure them from here. Um, under your username button, you're gonna see uh, some settings. So you can change preferences specific to you as the user of the software. If you've been given the ability to change your own password, you can do that here. Administrators can obviously change their password as needed, but as a administrator, you can also assign employees to not be able to update their password. Instead, they would request password changes from you for more security. As an administrator, I'm able to change system level settings. I'm able to look at my account and billing information. Um, so at any time in the future, I can pull activity. I can change credit card that this is being billed to. I manage all of my account information here. Access profiles. So every user of the system can have a different profile. And you can decide what they can do and what they can see in the system. And then there is a troubleshooting or administrative section of logging. So as the system is doing different events in, the, in uh, behind the scenes, you can view the logging files. And that's primarily used when discussing with our support department on any issues that are occurring in the software. So next to our user button, you see a question mark. In here is where you would go to find help. So there's a very in-depth context sensitive help at every um, spot within the software. Simply click that button to pull up help and you can search within the help. You can see examples in the help. And again, it's specific to the section of the software that you're working at the time. So we find it very useful. There's also a link to some videos that are online. I highly recommend that you go ahead and take a look at these for all new users of the software. They'll give you a good overview of where things are located and provide something to reference at your own pace, um, covering different topics. Sending feedback, so as you're using the system, if you run into issues or if you simply would like to see a change in the way the software is um, um, used or you need a new feature or you don't like the way a certain feature works, use the send feedback button, it goes directly to the developers. Uh, it's a great system. As an online solution, this product is updated continually. So every couple weeks, you'll see new um, enhancements, fixes, changes, and updates. And so the feedback uh, of our users is critical to driving uh, the continued improvement of the product. So please use feedback. Support center, so in there you can go find knowledge base articles. Again, just another reference point for help. You can also open tickets. So if you have an issue, you can go on there, submit a ticket, and um, within a few hours you'll have a solution um, from a support rep uh, back to you. So that's for non-critical things. Obviously you can always call um, and speak with a uh, technical support representative from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday Eastern time remote assistance so in the case that you do need help and you're speaking with a tech agent you would click here they can actually help you um, and remotely uh, log into your computer and see what you're seeing and help you uh, resolve any issues system status so as a cloud-based solution there's different services running in the web if at any time you want to see how things are running you simply open the view system status the web apps, which we're running now, which we're demonstrating, the mobile apps are healthy, and the clock connection. So if you have devices, those run through another web service. So you can see no issues in the last 90 days. Everything looks great. So we're good there. Uh, and about pay clock. So at any time, you can find your company ID, how long you've been in a, uh, a user of the software, how many active employees. Also, you, as a cloud-based solution, you'll always stay up to date on the latest version. We're in the enterprise edition, there's standard and enterprise, and I'll try to point out the differences today as we go through the system. And next to the question mark is one more area on the top right that you need to be familiar with, and that's the notification center. 
notifications will come from the system if you have actions or activities that you need to do. This is primarily related to time off requests. So as a approving supervisor, you have employees that can request time off from you either in the mobile app, the web app, or um, from actually logging in as a user of the software. And right now I don't have any notifications, but if you did, this, this uh, notification would turn green, let you know, you'd simply click it, and then you could take your action right from there. Working our way atop, across the top of the screen, you'll see a pull down for pay periods. So right now I'm in this, this period of time. I can go back to other periods that are recently opened. I can go view all, and I can see which ones are open and closed. So for um, good accounting practice and as you approve and export your data for payroll, you wanna close your pay period so that the data doesn't ever change. So you, once you close it, it's locked. So I'm see, so I've got some open pay periods and some closed ones. And I'll just go back to the latest period. I can also just navigate left and right. So chronologically in time, I can move through pay periods here. Pay classes are employees that have the same pay rules. And if your company has different types of employees that either get paid on a different pay period or have um, different overtime rules or different ways they get paid, um, you would have a different pay class. So you work with one pay class at a time. I have two a pay class set up for temporary workers at my company and just our regular standard employees. <clears throat> and then working our way to the left is main navigation. So we're on the home screen today. Um, the functional areas of the software are broken down into these categories. You'll be spending a lot of your time in time cards. So editing time transactions is in the time card section. Reports, obviously the, si the system calculates data, provides information about your employees, allows you to do analytics and reporting and I will be reviewing the report section, so I'll be using that quite often. And at the end of the day, if you're using the system to integrate into payroll, you're gonna be using the export function. So pay clock online calculates time, will calculate worked hours for employees for a pay period. If you're using another product for payroll, ADP paychecks, if you're using QuickBooks to do payroll, um, or you're using a, a different provider, or maybe your CPA, and you wanna export that data out, that would all be done through the export section, and that's typically done at the end of the pay period after all the edits are done. Scheduling, so if your company uses schedules, um, you would go in here, and we'll review that in a minute, how to set up and schedule your employees. The employee section, so these are the users of the system that are gonna be at the clocks, be using mobile apps or logging into the software. These are the people that are gonna be calculating their time, it'll be in this section. If you're using actual physical time clocks, this is where we'll manage the clocks. And then at the beginning, um, when you first set up your system, all of the setup options for your system are located in one convenient area, and you can work your way down from top to bottom as you go through that, and we'll, we'll look at that a little bit at the end. One other thing is if you're looking at this screen and you wanna free up some area, depending on the size of your web browser, you can always collapse and expand this just to free up a little more screen real estate. And again, that's just your choice. <clears throat> so the heart of the system I mentioned earlier is time cards, so we're gonna jump right in there. In our time cards, let's just look at the navigation here. We've got an employee list at the, uh, on the left. Depending on how many employees you have, this is gonna be sorted um, by the employee's name alphabetically. You can always search for an employee. So I'm gonna look for, for example, Jeffrey. I just start typing and I can find that employee very quickly, jump back and forth. But for now, I'm gonna see everybody. Also in this list, I'll point out this, this menu if you want to see how your employees, um, this list managed a little differently, you can do some things like hiding inactive employees. So employees that are no longer punching the clock, you do not want to uh, pay for them, for example, um, or you need to reassign their badge, you would make them inactive. You would terminate employees. So as your system of record for timekeeping, we never recommend that you delete we recommend that you terminate employees, that way all their data stays in the database and in our system. And you don't pay for terminated employees, you don't pay for inactive employees, so um, there is no cost to maintain that data and it's best practice. The Department of Labor is gonna want you to keep that data for two years. So go ahead and just terminate employees, but if you don't wanna see them in the list, you would simply hide them here. And I can just uh, highlight just active employees or add a new employee. So I'm gonna group this list. I like to look at my system in groups. 
When I do that, it's gonna open up my preferences and you can see this section over to the right that says group employees. This is gonna be for me as the user, I can decide. I wanna see all of my employees in department grouping and I'm gonna save that. And now you look at my list and I have some departments set up and my employees are now grouped by department, I can work in there. <clears throat> to the right, you're going to see the employee that you've selected. You're gonna see some functional buttons uh, within the system and then you're gonna see a time card. Um, so this time card doesn't have any data. Let's see if I can find a period with some data. Uh, bear with me here for a second. Okay, so you'll see in a time card here, um, you'll have a section that's called totals and I'll expand and collapse that. The employee number, the total hours they've worked. If I'm using wage uh, pay rates and wages, I can see that here and it'll calculate the total wages for this employee. I don't have a pay rate set up. If they have any other non-work time, so I have my overtime calculations, but I also have sick, holiday, vacation, all these are configurable to meet your company's rules. Um, and then the heart of the system is gonna be this time card. And the time card is gonna show the in-out punches up to four per day. Um, if you have more than four in a day, it simply just creates another row in the table. Um, it's gonna calculate the totals based on the rules that you have assigned uh, in your system and to this pay class or employee. I'm going to show any shift they worked. If they've been in a department, um, it would be here. And then again, we have all of our other pay classes, I'm sorry, pay codes for those days. So this employee has some punch activity. You'll notice these are all bold. Bold means that it was edited uh, manually. So this is a demonstration database and this, these punches were just keyed in by me. So you see they're bold. We maintain an audit, hail, uh, audit trail on these. So I can see who was um, edited by the administrator. At the same time on this transaction, you see there's no department, but perhaps that, that actually was working in a certain department. I can edit that, save it, and now that time was allocated to a specific department. You'll also notice here within the table um, a red highlight. So the system's designed to look for exceptions to make life a little easier for you. And you can see on this day, the employee came in in the morning um, there's a noon punch and then five. So obviously they missed a lunch punch. Um, I would go talk to this employee and see what time it looks like they probably clocked out at noon. Um, and so it's probably um, a 30 minute lunch just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to type in after I talk to them that it was a 1230 punch. I'm gonna click that and you'll see quickly that the system's smart enough to reorder all of the transactions. It knows that that was really your back end from lunch punch, so it moved it over. It was able to then calculate the total hours for the day. It also, by doing that, you'll see that it then knew that I reached 40 hours and five hours of those were overtime. If I look back up at my summary, you'll see total time is 45, regular still 40 because federal law pay overtime after 40 hours in a week, and overtime now is five hours. So I fixed that. At any time, I can go add a note to an employee and say, um, forgot to punch, I manually added. So I have a note for myself or anyone reviewing this time card, what happened and why there was a manual transaction on that day. And you can edit the note at any time. So I can key in times, obviously in the time card, <clears throat> this employee was off on these days, but assuming that, um, and actually let's just do that here as an example. So to delete a transaction, you simply click in the cell. I can hit the delete button. I don't want to see that anymore, so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to go ahead and delete, delete, and just delete all of Monday's punches. So these were manually added. If they came from the clock, those punches never disappear. So we never delete data um, that was originated from the clocks or mobile apps. So those are always stored with an audit trail. And if you ever needed to pull that data, it's very easy to get to. But since these were manually added to let me, let me delete those out of the system because it knew they were just manual additions. But if I wanted to, I can go uh, type in here that they took eight hours of PTO or personal time off on that day. And so you'll see now we have personal time uh, added. There weren't 40 hours of regular time. There were 36 hours of work now and eight hours of personal time. So that's one way to do it. I can go ahead and delete that again. That was manually added, so I can delete those that personal hours. I can always go here and also enter non-work time. I can pick the day, the number of hours, and the non-work code, save and act it. Um, so this is giving me a warning that this employee 
is only allowed so many hours of sick time. And if I go ahead and add the eight hours of sick time, that it's going to exceed that. And that's a choice that you can make as an administrator, whether to allow that. And it's just simply a reminder to the manager to go check those things before editing the time card. So as I work in this employee in their time card, when I'm done, this is, I'm looking back at a previous pay period and I said, this all looks good. I can run all my reports. At some point I can actually approve this card. Once you approve it, you can't edit it. So I mentioned before, best practice, after everything's been approved and you're ready to export to payroll, go through your employees and lock them. So you can see that's in a locked state. If I ever need to go back while this pay period's open, I can unapprove and start editing again, but um, you'd wanna see your approved employees. So that's the time card. Um, another tab within this, you'll see three navigation sections in the time card. Second one is the summary. So in the summary, I see all the same things. Um, but now I'm looking at employees and employees that have transactions for my sample database. Again, this is grouped by department and that's a preference that you have in your employee preferences. Um, I only have punch activity or time for three employees in my database right now. Uh, one of them has pay rates. Um, probably if this were my live system, I would definitely have pay rates on all employees. So I'd see gross wages. I would see time by employee and regular overtime and every pay code that I want to track. Um, from here, I can see what's going on in a, a summary view um, for the employees that I manage. I can run reports. I can run from here a time card report for all the employees I'm showing. Run a period total so I don't need to see the individual punches. I just want to see in each department how, what the hours are worked by day. Or I could say I want to run an employee totals report, so for employee level breakdown of hours. And we'll talk about reports here in a second. Um, if I'm on an employee, can, I can always uh, edit that employee while I'm looking at it or add new employees. Another great feature of this, so you're in the summary view and you wanna do some more additional analytics, you can go ahead and export either this entire table or a selection to Excel, which is very nice. So you can bring all this data into, uh, broken out into the hours and the columns that you see here. And columns can be moved around and um, it allows you to, a lot of flexibility and really, um, unlimited power in doing analytics on a period level. <clears throat> I can also, if I, you know, I showed you how I can click on approve, there is the functionality to approve all time cards are unapproved. So if I've reviewed them all, I can click here, you'll see the check boxes or if I were to actually drill down into an employee now, even though I haven't edited this employee, you'll see that they're approved and locked and I did all that from the summary section. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna unapprove cards real quick here for a second. I'm gonna go back into our, this employee we were working with, and let's just say that um, I didn't manually add that transaction for the lunch punch, so I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna go back to this, this third tab, and that's exception view. So for speed and efficiency, you may not wanna look at every single time card, you just wanna look at time cards every day that have an exception that you've decided you wanna look at. When I click in the exception view, it's gonna show me a list of employees in the first column, and in the second column, show me the exception that occurred in the day that it occurred and actually let me go to their time card and directly to the point where I can act on that and correct that situation. So we went in, I had a missing punch for an employee, uh, Shane Acoth. And when I went to my exception view, it actually pulled that up directly. If there was 20 exceptions in, in the database for this, this pay period, I'd see each employee listed on the left, I would click on it and I could act on that exception. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, fix that while I'm here, 12.30, uh, now that exception is gone. So what you see in your exception list is totally up to you. So right now I fixed that exception, it's missing, but let's say what I really wanna see right now, I'm seeing missing registrations, but I wanna see everyone who arrived late or left early, and that's gonna be based on if you're using schedules or not. And if you're using schedules, you can see a lot of other things like um, whether they missed in and outs, breaks, um, out of shift punches and things like that. So um, unapproved exceptions. So you can have an approved exception and you can decide whether to filter that list. So there's a lot of flexibility in the exception view. And a lot of customers decide to start with exception view as their first point of interaction with the software to get everything cleaned up. So I added a couple of different exceptions. Again, there is no more. So I've gone through my time cards. I've looked at my summary, I've approved everyone, I've made all my edits. We'll just go ahead and approve those again. And I'm done with this period. 
we talked about earlier about the power of the analytics and reporting. So when I go into my reports section, you're going to see a big list of reports here. Depending on the version of the software, you may see a longer list or a shorter list based on the functionality or features in your, your system. They're sorted alphabetically. We can go in here and actually see them in uh, types of reports. So ones that you've most recently used, reports that you've customized and saved can be in your My Reports section. Reports related to payroll totals will be in one section. Attendance related reports around schedules and time off will be in one section. Lists, schedule reports, management reports, and administrator reports. So let's go to payroll reports. So when I do that, that you can see the list actually comes down uh, to a, a very workable list that you can see. So I'm going to start with an employee time card. And if I click on an employee time card, you'll see a flyout menu. You just click it once. I can customize this report. So if I change any of these settings, I can change the name and save it as a new report. Grouping. So we talked before about how we want to group things. You can either no group and sort, sort it alphabetically or use the departments of the employees. We could also say, okay, um, once we start a new department, because I want to hand these out to department managers, let's print home departments every time we have a change, print on a new page so that I can hand those out. Sorting, name, the badge number they use in the system or the employee ID is for sorting, ascending, descending. You know, I can close these back up and then my employees. So again, here's my list, but let's just say I want to view this in a grouped function. So here are my departments that we talked about before. I can decide I really only want to see people that aren't assigned to a department and these two departments, and I don't want to see this location at all. <clears throat> the pay codes that I want to see. So I mentioned the system's configurable, regular overtime one, overtime two, overtime three. Let's just say you don't use overtime three. You don't have to have that here and you can change that. And these um, columns are customizable to how the way you want to see it. And again, for additional flexibility, how do you want to display the hours, AM, PM, or 24 hours? Um, how do you want to see the time? So when we're calculating totals, do you want to see the minutes or do you want to see hundreds of an hour? So instead of um, eight hours and 30 minutes, you can say, I want to see 8.5 hours as totals and that's selectable here. Do you want to display notes on your report? Um, default is to show the notes. It's always good to show what happened as you made notes in a time card. Employees that don't have any data, so that uh, if you, you get in your choice, if you want to see that on the report, and which pay codes and the total hours. So um, we we'll go ahead and I've got my settings and now let's run the report. As it's calculating the report, you'll see, it'll tell you how many pages were generated, the employees that I selected. So I said, give me employees only with data and so it filtered it out and it knew, it was smart enough to know in this period that they only had three employees with data. I can go in, you can see we worked with Shane's time card um, before, and you can see the note that I added for that day, the punches, the plus signs mean that it was manually added. So you always have an audit trail to see what was manually added versus generated from the devices. Um, and you can see a, a legend up here at the top, and the note is tied to this. There's a place for me as a supervisor to sign off and the employee to sign off. I want to do that. I can navigate through the report just by clicking on the employee's names and move up and down through the report. I can move through the pages up here. I can zoom in and, and zoom out. Uh, I want to see the full page, standard uh, visual navigation items. I can personalize this report. Again, I can change some of those settings that we just looked at and save it. And then obviously I can print. And when I go to print, what's really going to happen here is it's generated a PDF file. So uh, PDF format is going to be the best way for you to print to any printer. Um, it's going to be also a great way for you to save these reports and email these reports as needed. So every report you see here is on the screen. When you go to print, it will generate a PDF version of that report. I can also take these reports and export them out to Excel or HTML for added flexibility. And again, this report is using the same navigation of filtering by pay class and period. So this is running for the period that we were working in. I can always change the pay period here or do it, pick a custom date range and run the report again. So you have unlimited flexibility about dates of reporting. 
just note that pay period reports really need to be based on the actual dates that your pay periods start and end or the totals don't make any sense. So that'll always be pay period specific. Um, and then you have report preferences. So some of the things that we selected um, when we were setting up this report to view it the first time and you saw some defaults listed, you'll see that there's a bunch of defaults that you can set for you as a user to the system, save them, and you won't have to set those every time um, when you're on reports. So this is a, a overall uh, reporting preferences section for you as a user to give you more flexibility. There are literally dozens of reports that do different things and provide different data to different people. Contact list, department totals, if you want to run a list of pay rates by employees, you have those in your list reports. Um, schedule reports, holidays, schedule versus actual. What do you, if you want to print a weekly schedule for your employees, that's all available. Um, management, so you have, really have some managerial tools in here, benefit time and things of that nature. And administrator, um, things like fingerprint enrollment, access profiles that you want to see for your employees are all available. One resource that I suggest that you take a look at is on the Latham website. If you go to latham.com, under pay clock online, you'll see a management report section. The reason I recommend people take a look at this is because they're actually the list of the reports with an overview and a sample PDF. So if you want to understand what's available to you with sample data, so you can, again, you can see an employee overtime report with wages. You can view all that, again, at Latham. Um, Dot com under pay clock online management reports maybe bookmark that URL and you can go through the list of reports this is updated all the time as reports are made available and their samples for you to view so we're going to go back into the system and we've done reporting so we've done all of our reporting we've approved our time cards and now we're really ready to finish payroll at this point we're going to go in and, and export a list of any exports that you have set up for your system are going to be available here um, but that's really going to be depending on how you do payroll. It's unique to every company and we're agnostic to payroll. So whatever you're using, um, you can, you can use it. You can switch services and continue using our software and, and you can actually export data to multiple systems if you want. That's all done through the manage exports function. These are exports that I have set up, but let's just say I want to set up a new one. When you come into your system, there won't be any listed. So when you go to set up new, you'll say, okay, what is the export type? You'll go through with our standard uh, exports. Again, this list is updated all of the time. We support all the major payroll services. If you don't see yours listed, then please reach out to us um, through the tech support agent or through your sales representative uh, for a quote on doing a custom export. Um, well, let's just say we're running an ADP. I want to set up an ADP export as an example. What it's going to do is actually install some information on my system. It's going to run through a wizard and ask me some questions specific to me as an ADP client that the system needs to know to generate the file in the proper format for ADP. I'm going to say, really, I don't pay my temps out of this system. I just do my reporting. So I really just want to export my standard um, employees. Okay, what is the name of this uh, export file that I'm going to generate? ADP is going to provide a code for importing data. And you would provide that code here. Um, I'm not sure what the format exactly is. And you can group your export by departments. ADP supports that. And the pay frequency, how, how often are you gonna be exporting your payroll? This is pulling from your default payroll settings for your system. And this is really where the, t the integration happens. This is where we're mapping the times that we calculate in pay clock to payroll types in ADP. So for ADP, they use a terminology called payroll type. We use pay code and we can decide, okay, in ADP, that's really called REG time. And you would know this, your payroll administrator would know exactly what the payroll types are that your company uses. And you would map for any pay codes you're using in our system, the appropriate pay code in ADP. Um, departments. So again, ADP allows you to export data and break it out by departments for payroll. I can decide whether I want to map it, but in ADP, that's really 0043. That's the way they do the departments. That's just an example. So I would map all of my departments. I would confirm my settings and I would save. From that point on, I now have ADP run export. You can see that when I come back in and I've approved my um, 
time cards and approve my run my reports and I'm ready to go to payroll. <clears throat> I would come to this section. I would see my ADP run export. I can look, again look at my settings and modify them if need be. But really, what I want to do is export my pay period totals for that pay period that I was just working in. I would click the export data button, and for that period, it's going to do some error checking. It's going to make sure everything's good to go. So you'll always know whether you have the file created to send to payroll and it's done properly. It's a very powerful system and it's really the entire system is designed to be integrated with payroll. So we've done that. I did mention earlier some other sections of the software that you would use. Uh, one of them is potentially scheduling. So scheduling is where you would come in and decide um, when that employee is supposed to work. So if I click on an employee and I pick the, the period, <clears throat> you can see for this employee, I have no um, schedule set up yet for January. But let's just say that I do Monday through Friday. I can actually say I want to assign a shift to that employee as a manager. And I'm going to save that. So now I have the manager. It's telling me how many hours they're scheduled to work on that shift what the wages would be based on the employee that was assigned. You know, I scheduled one employee um, at this time. I can go in and edit this and say, this is actually a recurring shift. So I don't have to schedule day by day. I can say, really, this just repeats. So I have a one week, um, Monday through Friday. I'll go ahead and save that. Uh, so it's saying there's an overlap. We're just gonna ignore that warning for right now. And you can see here, that now I've recurred that shift to uh, happen every week, Monday through Friday, based on that employee. And again, I would go back through. If I want to look at a specific day, you'll see this additional tab at the top. He's, um, Shane's the only employee that I scheduled for this day. So you can see his shift is located here. As I scheduled other employees, um, I can assign Cody, to another shift, you can see it's actually uh, incorrect in the settings, but you actually set the time and dates for shifts um, or the start and stop times for shifts and that would show on your time bar here so you can actually see coverage by day or month. No, no schedule there. So scheduling, uh, that's a very high level view of scheduling works and as you use uh, shifts in the system, you'll understand how to apply schedules to days and how those shifts affect reports and calculations for employees. Employees, this is the heart of how you decide who's going to be using and tracking the system. Again, you see that saying that familiar employee list in the employee section, just like we navigated time cards. Um, once you pull up an employee screen, you'll see general information on that employee <coughs> wages. So you can not only assign wages to an employee, um, but you can keep a, a history of pay changes for each employee, which is important. Uh, important. Uh, allowed departments. So this is another great feature where if I have an, an employee that can work in different departments, I can go ahead and select that. I can manage pay rates by the department. So now you can see they all have the same pay rate, but let's just say when this employee works in this department is 1250, but they actually get paid uh, an incentive pay to work in these different departments or job functions. Now for this period, on this date, I've set this pay rate. When this employee works in these departments, it's going to adjust their calculations for gross wages accordingly. Very powerful. Benefit accruals, so the system has the ability to generate time awarded to employees, accrue benefits based on anniversary settings. So you can, I'm not gonna, uh, spend a lot of time on this, but you can set up a policy based on your company's rules to automatically apply each pay period earned time based on how long that employee's been with you. First year of employment, the second through fifth year of employment can earn at a different rate and so on. Access, so you can decide who this employee is in your system. So is it just a employee level um, access? Are they a supervisor, manager? Do they manage, if they are a supervisor, do they manage other employees? We say yes, well who? So it's telling me I need to say before I can do this, but Alex Scott, for our company, let's just say manages this department of employees. I'll save and exit. So now when 
um, when Alex Scott comes into the system and they look at their, when they log in, their employee list will only show the employees that I just assigned to them. Are they allowed to log into the website? Do we allow them mobile application? And most likely, yes. So every employee should have an email and a password if they're gonna allow mobile access. And you would do that here. You would set their password as well. You can have personal information that runs on reports for an employee. It's a, um, a mini HR database for you to use. Um, and by the way, with this, there may be fields that you need that aren't here. We also have the ability each employee to have a custom field. You can decide what the name of that field is and store it um, in the system. Back to advanced, you have some options to override general pay class and company settings um, in here. So if you have a specific employee that you never want to include in an export for some reason, you can click that here. Holiday calendars are very powerful, so you predefine for the company. If you have our enterprise edition, company holidays, and you can decide which calendar that employee works on and what they get paid. So as the employee is, um, as that holiday occurs, for example, um, the hours would be applied to automatically to that employee without any manual intervention by the manager or supervisor based on the rules you have um, for that holiday calendar. And overrides for breaks. That would all be here. You also have the ability to store a picture for each employee um, which is handy for you know new employees or new managers that want to uh, know who their employees are. <laughs> um, from there, you also have this manage button. So you can assign which clocks the employee can work at. Again, we talked about time off, um, benefit time accruals. You can manage all that here. I can work with the departments, manage messaging directly to the employee. So a lot of our devices allow direct messaging. So when employee clocks in or out, you supervisor can send a message. That would be set here the rights for that employee, which employees, we showed you that earlier, um, that employee can manage, and then the schedule. So all that would be from the manage section. Again, there is a delete. We, we highly recommend that you don't delete, and there will be a warning message if you try to do it. What you really want to do is um, use the status. And so we always want the date of hire for calculating benefit time, but if this employee is not going to be using the system, I can make them inactive. Um, It'll tell you that they can't clock in and out when you make them inactive, but I can also make them terminate. And when I terminate, it's saying, okay, free up their badge or their PIN number for somebody else to use because they're no longer with the company, but I want to keep my data. And we store the dates that they're terminated or inactive, and you can always unterminate and reactivate an employee at any time and save that information. So I'm going to undo anything I just did <laughs> for this employee. Clock's the same way. So the device, uh, Latham has several different models of devices depending on what you're using, fingerprint models, face recognition, uh, proximity badge swipes. You would set those up here. There's a lot of settings related to how that clock interacts. And you would simply go through and add the type of device that you, the model, and then set the settings for that, that uh, specific device connected to your system. You can have unlimited in different locations. It's all connected to the web, so it's very easy. And then the part that you'll be spending some time in and, or your with your tech representative or your implementation consultant is in the setup of the system. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of this, but you would set up locations, information on your pay classes, how you wanna accrue benefit time, the type of pay code your specific company uses, most likely tied uh, very closely to the payroll system. So that would all come from your payroll. In enterprise, we allow premium time. So in many industries, you work specific times of the day or after so many uh, days in a row or, or specific um, rules, you accrue or you earn at a different rate, either a different wage or additional hours are paid for premium time zones. And you can override pay codes that times accumulated in based on those rules. We talked about holiday calendars. Premium time and holiday calendars are enterprise features. If you don't know what standard and enterprise I, I are, um, your solutions consultant would help you with decide what fits your system best. Uh, rounding rules. So most companies don't pay to the exact minute. They pay to either the quarter, tenth of an hour, or some other rounding rule. Um, it just it's a it's a clean way to get your totals, and you're not always um, running into overtime with one or two extra minutes uh, here or there. Um, rounding is is accepted by the Department of Labor, and so it's just a, a general practice that most companies do. We talked about departments, shifts and breaks. So we showed where to schedule shifts and breaks, but you would go in and actually set up. What are the shifts that all, your employee can work in that section? And then users. We talked about employees in the top left here. 
users are people that are going to be logging into the software from here and doing some administrative function, either supervisors, administrators, payroll people, HR people. You can set up users. Every user can have different rights, privileges, and employees they can see, and you would do all that here. And really at this point, I think you've seen everything um, at a high level that our software does. I highly encourage you, um, if you haven't already, to sign up for a trial. Um, if you're in a trial, you can go ahead and add data at any time. Um, if you have an existing Latham device, you can connect it in the trial. And a trial is gonna be a fully functional version of the software, just timed um, to a set period <clears throat> at any time during the trial. If you're ready to sign up, there'll be the ability in your trial to actually go ahead and sign up and start using the system. So anyway, I hope this was a helpful overview for you today. And if you have any questions, please reach out to your solutions consultant. And thanks again.